Broadcasting from the beautiful state of Maine, welcome to another episode of the Learning from Leaders podcast, the show that focuses on identifying and developing the skills and behaviors that will inspire, empower, and compel others to follow your lead. Listen as Patrick's guests talk about the powerful leadership approaches they have identified and developed, which are vital for leading in today's challenging times. These are the same approaches that will positively impact you as a leader, too. Learning from Leaders provides the right balance of leadership research with real-world scenarios, making it easy for you to rise above your best. All right, let's start the show. Hey, everybody. I'm Patrick Browner, the host of this podcast, Learning from Leaders, as well as the author of the best-selling book, The Leadership Bridge, How to Engage Your Employees and Drive Organizational Excellence. And on today's call, we're taking a different spin. We're actually going to talk about podcasting. And for those of you that might be thinking about it and wondering how do you share your messages, my guest today, Jonathan Riviera, is going to talk about his company and how he helps individuals that want to get on this platform to be able to share their message. And he certainly has a lot of experience. He's been in this since 2008, so he's seen a lot. And he's also, to me, just a great person. So let's get into it. Jonathan, thank you so much for being on the Learning from Leaders podcast. And we're going to take a little different spin on it today because we're going to talk podcast, but I do think that that's relevant to leadership because I think there are many people out there that have a lot of knowledge that they want to be able to share with people. And to me, this is a great platform to do that. And you're like the podcast OG. I mean, you're 2008 starting a podcast. So I'd love for you to talk about your experience with that and really help people that are out there that might be thinking of this. What does that look like? So this is how we're going to do it. You're going to call me an old man and then we're going to go from there. (laughs) (laughs) You're the old man with the cane in podcasting. Yeah, man. Which is really not. (laughs) I love it. I want to put it on the air. I want it documented that I'm incredibly grateful that you invited me on your show. And then not only that, but then you want to talk about what's in my wheelhouse. You, my friend, are a gracious host and I will do anything for you. So yeah, it's been an interesting journey. I've learned a lot, especially what not to do. And maybe I can save our listeners some heartaches today, but I wouldn't change it for the world. Podcasting is the reason you and I are talking today. And podcasting, in my mind, the reason I have the life I have today, which is a good life where I get to do the things I want to do, be with my family, give to charities and the church. And I think all of it comes from this simple concept that I want to start us off with. The right words from the right person at the right time can change your life. And I know you're a speaker, you're a TEDx speaker. You go up on that stage, you go tell a story, and you see that moment where somebody gets something. They may have heard it from five, 10, 100 other people, doesn't matter. Today, When Patrick delivered that message, it hit me. And I bet you get that when you do your talks. I know you get it from your podcast. And I know that we help all the experts that we work with give those breakthroughs to thousands and thousands and thousands of listeners. It's so interesting you say that, Jonathan, because I will going to tell you something that I do when I go and give talks every time. And especially this started out when I started doing talks for high school kids. And there was one in particular that I do called Your Past is Your Power. And every time on my way to give a talk, I say a prayer. I ask just for the guidance and the ability to be able to deliver a message that I know somebody in the audience needs to hear. And it never fails that somebody comes up to me afterwards and says, this was something I needed to hear today. It was like, this was made for me. And it's nothing special that I did. I believe it was that you're in the right place at the right time. So exactly what you're talking about. Bro, this is it. I figured it out. And it's my bigger mission. It's what gets me out of bed each day is knowing the people I'm helping are helping other folks have those breakthroughs. And maybe you don't have the right connections. Maybe you didn't grow up the best. Maybe you didn't go to the best school. You're not connected that way. But we have the ability right now to help people no matter where they are. And it is a blessing. It really is. Yeah, totally. So how did you start? Laziness. (laughs) <laughs> pure and simple lazy <laughs> all right the cat's out of the bag i'm old we know i got online in 08 and around that time 
you would have people talking about being a thought leader. And at that time, thought leadership was basically blogging. And I was not a writer. I mean, I barely made it out of high school, straight D student, failed all my classes almost. And so writing was not going to be my thing. And I got my first Mac computer around that time. And I found this little program called GarageBand. And I was like, oh, wow, look, I can record audio so I can just talk. I don't have to write. And that was it. I started talking to build my presence online. And I didn't realize that I was so far ahead of everybody because then all of my friends, everybody I knew is like, how are you doing this? How are you getting your words up there? Can you help me? And that's over years of hearing that I turned it into the business and into my mission. And here we are today. I mean, we're helping people every day. And that's really, for me, that's what it's about. I'm not kidding. I'm getting really, all right, it's going to sound kind of lame, but I feel like this is what God put me on this earth for. And this happened during COVID when we were locked down as I had this realization was, what can I do? I can't help anybody. I can't do anything. We're all locked away. We're stuck here inside, sheltered. And I would do walks around the lake outside in the morning and just kind of thinking and meditating. And I remember thinking about helping the Knights of Columbus and what they were doing. And oh, I can give them money, can't give them time because we can't connect. And I was just thinking, what can I do? What do I have to give? And I realized that my gift, my ministry was my podcast and my ability to help my hosts connect with more people. And especially around that time, if you remember when we were all locked down, people were depressed People were drinking, people were sad, and the news was pounding you with horrible messages of stay away from your neighbor, don't look at them or you're going to die kind of stuff. And I thought, wow, this is scary. And I don't know what I'm going to do. And it hit me morning prayer, morning meditation, walking around the lake. It was like, this is what you do. You bring the light, leadership in good and hard times. It's an acronym. And I do that by connecting with guys like you by connecting with the people, the experts that we help, by getting good, positive people, putting good, positive messages out there to help people break free from whatever's holding them back. So talking about the pandemic, I would imagine, I haven't seen numbers on this, but the podcast market actually would have increased during that in terms of number of people that, that started a podcast. Yeah, And I stress yeah. that started a podcast. Doesn't mean they continued it, right? <laughs> <laughs> what is the average in terms of I mean, episodes? It's been a while since I look at the stats, but I remember back in the day, they used to have this term. I don't know if they still use it called pod fade. And in general, podcasts don't make it past their 10th episode because they're just not prepared. They are not getting ahead. Or maybe they're getting in their head and thinking too much about it rather than delivering. Because I saw you did a post on LinkedIn somewhere where it's like, hey, even if you don't have time, maybe do a quick teaser episode. Just talk your mind, get it out there, but get into the rhythm, get your reps in and keep doing it. And I think people will quit before they get into that level of comfort. And that's one of the good things about if you're not doing it on your own, having some accountability, a coach, a mentor, someone that can tell you, hey, here's what it looks like. Here's the rough spots you're going to hit. Here's what you need to work through. And don't worry about that. Because I think so many of us, even me, man, I started Daddy's Working, which is just a pet project that I do sometimes now. But when I started that podcast, I had already recorded almost 1,200 shows between my own shows and being a co-host. And I got on the mic for the first solo show. Um, come on, 1,200 shows? So I can imagine somebody that's just doing it for the first time, that pressure is way, way greater and that resistance is greater. So it's good to have somebody in your corner, a friend, a mentor, whatever it is, to help push you past that. And also the reason you're doing it, that's kind of a big deal. The reason, the why, as we all know, will pull you through those ups and downs. Yeah, that is so true. My podcast actually, so I started mine September of 2018. So Labor Day weekend. I remember that because I had purchased all of the equipment to start my podcast a year and a half before that. A year and a half. It literally sat in a box in my office that I could see for 18 months and wow. I didn't touch it. I was scared to, I just didn't feel as though I was going to be able to pull this off. And I remember I took an online course on podcasting and I sat there with my iPad and my computer. 
I would pause it and would do the setup on iTunes and all of that. It took a lot, but I finally got to that point. My why was strong enough at that point. I said, I'm not putting this off any longer. I said, my first episode is going to run the week of Labor Day weekend. And that was it. Although, I mean, I will say that there have been times where it's, I've missed episodes. And again, it's hard. Once you stop, it's hard to start pedaling again at times. A week goes by, two weeks goes by. So for me, I would say, stick with it. Once you go, don't let up because that sort of momentum will keep you going. So that's one of the things that we do when we're working with an expert is we have this thing called the content vault. And it's an evergreen vault of content. The episodes today that you record, you can use a year, two years, three years from now because they're evergreen topics and you can build on them, which by the way, I saw in your post as well. (laughs) I should be interviewing you about these things. But one of the things that we do with our hosts is content vault. All right, what's the first eight episodes? Because we're trying to launch with six to eight episodes in the can of a weekly show so that you have a two-month runway so that you have no excuses. Yeah, and that is it. So you talk about something else, though, direct response podcasting framework. What is that? Ah, my life's work. (laughs) A snazzy name for an old thing. (laughs) Depends on your perspective. But yeah, we have a mythology to building a podcast because I think a lot of people get into the podcast game and they have that excitement and it seems pretty cool. And like you and I have done, you buy cool equipment, so you want to try it out and use it, even if it sits on the shelf for a year and a half before you use it, you still have it there. You want to try it out. All that novelty wears off pretty quickly. So we have a system and a framework that we built to help our clients go through the podcasting process. And so if anybody has studied direct response marketing, they would know. And if you haven't, you're going to know right now that direct response marketing is essentially getting the person who is receiving the marketing message to take a step, step by step by step. Like it's not about the sale. It's about first getting their attention, then getting them to click, then getting them to listen then getting them to take action. And so there's a method to the madness that we have. And we start with something we call the client cloner. And this is another mistake that new people make is they don't plan the foundation of their show. They just have that excitement. They want to try out the equipment. They want to get it up there, but they don't have a plan. And so if you don't have a plan and you don't have a why, you might not last. And that's cool. We're going to help you right now. So the first thing we look at is the client cloner. Who are we talking to? Who is the person that we want to receive our message? And I'll give you a little cheat code here. A lot of times that person is just like us. So if you can't think of it, just think of people that have the same values as you, that have the same goals and same drive. And that's probably a good starting point. So we think about the client cloner. Who are you talking to? Then we think about the content vault. Who are they? What are we saying to them? And the only way to know what we're saying to them and who they are, how that fits together is the client matrix, which is what do we want them to do? Where do we want them to go? What do we want their journey to look like from listener to fan to client? And see, our podcasting is focused on business development, generating clients, getting referrals. And so all those pieces fit together. You almost don't have to think about it. Once you have those three pieces together, You can start mapping out episodes that are for this person to get them to do that. It's quite simply a formula to get your listener moving and to get you results from the work that you put into your podcast. When you talk about that, I think of my own journey through this. And I remember all of the, oh, you're going to monetize and you're going to get all these sponsors. And that never was my interest. I was looking to do two shows a week when I started. And I realized how ambitious that was now. I wanted to do one show where I interviewed somebody, and then I wanted to do another show where I just took a piece of research around leadership or influence or sales training and just talk about that, just dissect that piece of information. And that was based on my background when I was in the biotech industry. I was in sales and sales training and involved in there. And I always felt like there's research around why people make the decisions that they do. And if people could understand that if it could be broken down, it would help them to act on that stuff. So I loved the topic. It wasn't about how much money I was going to make trying to do this. Now, that said, I will say for me, the podcast has certainly generated revenue for me because of people listening to the episodes 
and then reaching out to me after because they like what they hear. What I talk about resonates with either their company or themselves as leaders. And that, I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's the real. And that's why I get offended. And thank you for not doing this, by the way. I get offended when somebody calls me a podcaster. I'm ready to throw down some fisty cuffs. Don't call me a podcaster. I am a businessman who uses a podcast as part of my model. And that's the difference is you just said it. People are running around thinking they're going to get big, giant audiences and sponsors are going to make it rain hundies to sponsor yeah. their show. And it's look, I'm not saying that doesn't work and that's not real. What I'm saying is I don't know anything about that. What I know is how to make an impact with a much smaller audience. And a perfect example of that right now, and you can take this or not, but the only reason I'm here speaking with you guys today, speaking with Patrick, and I know him is because he came through my model of my audience is the person across the mic from me. That's the only audience I care about. And so I don't care who listens on the outside. What I care about is when I'm with you being 100% focused on you. And let me tell you something for coaches, consultants, service providers, that's a hell of a way to get in front of a person is to have 30 minutes with them on a show, talking to them, learning about them, building rapport. And so for me, I've always been the quality over quantity. And I'm more focused on smaller audience and the opportunities like this opportunity. I could hire a company and they could reach out to a bunch of people and get me on your show. Maybe if you're open to that, that's valuable. But instead, you and I met, we had a good time and you invited me on your show. That is an ROI in my perspective. And the same way that you experience it, where they listen to the show, the show is evergreen, the show is on topic, the show is about leadership. And now they're contacting you to engage you in work. And that's the way I see monetizing. And we're not on video. You can't see me doing the air quotes. That's the way you monetize a podcast. Yeah, it is so true. So when you're talking about, well, you just get on there and you talk to people that I mean, I guess you're thinking are like yourself or same interests. I have found the same thing is that in terms of my episodes, although they all sort of fall around, I would say leadership on some level, but they're of interest to me. And I put them out there to hopefully help other people to gain some knowledge. Just like this, when we started talking before this, it was that I want to do a show based on what you do, because I believe that there are a number of people out there. We hear about the great resignation right now and quiet quitting. How many people are out there saying, boy, you know what? I'm miserable what I'm doing right now, but I don't know what else to do. And maybe this is, again, not the monetizing component to it, but maybe this is an interest that they've had, that they have things that they want to share. And this becomes a vehicle for them to be able to do that. It was yeah. for me. Yeah, absolutely. In fact, one of my favorite things about the work that I get to do every day is the, the people I get to help. And I remember that when we brought on Dr. Rick Rigsby, we do his show, How You Living, and he wanted to be an inspirational person. He wanted to uplift his listeners and give them good, positive messages, which is what we're all about. But when we were going through our process, he broke our process because we're thinking in terms of salespeople and who's our market and who we're trying to talk to. And he was like, look, I don't need to sell to these people. I just want to inspire them. Who's going to hire me is the people they work for. And so this is just for the people out there. And I couldn't get my mind around it until we came up with this concept of values match. These people have the same values as me, the same work ethic, the same beliefs. And that changed our perspective on everything where we realized that if we led with our values, the right people would gravitate towards us. Just like you and I are talking here, we did research on you before you came on the show. We looked at your content. We made sure that we had some similarities and some of the same things were important to us before we spoke. And that way, when we get on, it's like, oh, hey, I could be friends with you. I like you. And that's really where it comes from is sharing those values outward, being open with them. And that attracts more people with the same values. So in your example, somebody who is maybe struggling with the idea of leaving where they are or starting something new, this tool could quite simply be a tool to have conversations. And as any business person can tell you, conversations equal opportunities. The more conversations you have, 
the more opportunities you have. So whether it's through an interview or whether it's through the dialogue that you share on the show, sharing your values, what you believe in, what's interesting to you, these conversations create opportunities for you. So you don't even have to do it during office hours, right? I mean, this is something you could do at night. You could do on the weekends. You don't have to leave where you are now to start this, but also the investment component to it. I'm sure people are wondering, well, how much does this cost to be able to do a podcast? For somebody just to start out, aside from using a service, just to get the equipment, what's somebody going to look at? Here's what I'm going to do. So you can add it to your show notes. We have an equipment guide that we share with our clients and the most basic of basic setups. You can get started for about a hundred bucks. So there's really nothing stopping you yeah. because I recommend a mic. You got to have a mic. That's like, I, I heard you on my show and I'm like, yeah, that's a pro because you can hear the people who are dialing in on the phone. It sounds different. So yeah, invest in a mic, but an ATR 2100 is one of the ones that we recommend or another one that's similar is like a Samsung or something like that. They're both under a hundred bucks. They yeah, plug the ATR right is your, one. Yeah, that's a great mic. Yeah, it's that was one I had paper. first. I want to say it was like $79 or something like that. It was really affordable. Expensive. Yeah, it's really affordable. There's nothing stopping you. That's how I got started. I had a $100 mic plugged into my computer and I started recording. And today it's easier than ever to get your podcast on iTunes, to get it connected to all the other places. But that's like the least expensive way I think that anyone can start other than maybe recording right on your phone which is another option. But yeah, the price doesn't have to be a barrier there if you have a message and you have a mission. Yeah. My first episode, I actually went out and interviewed this person at their office. So I had the professional recording. I still have it. I can't remember the name of it right now, but I think it cost me like $400. And then I had to download it onto Audacity, Audacity. to get it to set up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can tell the quality difference today with this is just so much better. Oh yeah. You've got good sound, brother. So much better. What other challenges do you think people should be aware of in terms of getting into this? I think the main thing is I'd rather see people using it as a business tool. So I need to work with financial advisors because I offer some kind of insurance or something like that. I'd be looking at how can I just talk to more financial advisors and I'd be looking at it as a tool for networking. This is networking for the digital age. And that's the way I use the podcast right now. Results Leader, where we met, is really a business development and networking tool. So think of your business idea and use the podcast as a way to support that business idea. So whatever it is you're trying to sell, who do you need to sell it to and set it up so that you can have conversations with those people? Yeah, such a great point. And again, I think back to when I do my podcast, if you think about it in terms of those people that might be interested in what I do for a business in terms of working with organizations or individuals from a leadership or a team building or sales perspective, if you don't resonate with the things that I'm talking about on this podcast, we've both saved ourselves some time because it's not going to be a fit. And I do think there's a lot of value in that. It's almost like a screening tool, but also a business card that you leave behind where they can pick it up and listen to it at any point. And all of a sudden they're like, you know what, what he said made sense. I, or she, I like that. And I'm going to reach out to him or they're way off. I disagree completely. We just saved ourselves some time. Good and good either way. Right. And that's one of the things that I've always liked about podcasting. And I guess you'd call it longer form content because it's not like it's two minutes. You're going to do 15, 20 minute episode at least is that fact that when you plan correctly and you know what you want it to do, you know who you're talking to, you know what you want them to do and you build those evergreen pieces of content, you can use them over and over. I just did a case study with my man, Billy Gwaltney from Protect Your Assets, an insurance guy who works with physicians. And one of the advantages that he said to having a podcast that he never, ever dreamed of was the physicians he works with are in the ER. They're working crazy hours. They're working three days in a row, all day, all night. And he's like, they're listening to me at three in the morning. Like I would never, ever be on a call with them. But he's like, time is no longer a barrier for my business. So he's eliminated the time barrier. Yeah. Not only that, by picking the right content, the evergreen content, we helped him create his content vault. They're going back and listening to old episodes that he recorded a long time ago. Those old episodes are knocking out objections and they're building rapport for him yeah. and they're doing it. There's no time continuum here. It's the most amazing 
thing to think about that something that you recorded two years ago would still be working for you today. Right. So along that, I have two last questions. One is around length of time for a podcast. Any thoughts on that? You, some go four hours and others go, yeah, Rogan or Tim Ferriss, right? I think Ferris. he is as long as well. But in reality, any date out there, or is there anything to that? Or is it just, you know, your show's gone long enough when you don't have any more content or anything interesting to say? I'm going to do my thing here. <laughs> I like them short. All right. Yeah. I have this concept of the way that the podcast works for your business. Remember, I think of this in a bigger picture of your business and how it fits in to help you achieve the goal you want to achieve, which is most likely going to be more sales, more clients, more impact. And I think in terms of where do people listen, and you can check out Edison's share of ear report, where people listen. They listen when they're traveling to and from work. They listen when they're exercising. They listen when they're cleaning the house. So they listen when they're doing other things. Yeah. And they usually set their schedule on how they listen. I'm listening to this guy Monday, this guy Tuesday, this girl Wednesday, whatever, because it's part of their schedule. And so I have this concept that we call keep them wanting more. ATWM is what we call it. And inside of that, we like single serving episodes. What is a single serving episode? I go down to the gym. I know I'm going to work out 30 minutes. I can listen to Patrick for 30 minutes. That's my 30 minute jam on Tuesday. Keep them wanting more. And the single serving episode work to keep your listeners momentum. Because remember, we talked about what do we want that listener to do? For me, I want them to book a call with me. For you, it might be something different, but I keep them wanting more by keeping the episodes short enough, single serving episodes. So it finishes in the time that they're doing their thing and they have a decision to make. Do I listen to another one and another one and another one? So I start my Netflix binge or I really like this guy. Do I just book a call? Keep them wanting more so they keep their momentum going, whether it's diving into your content or getting onto your calendar. I love that because it really is about building trust too, right? Because I might have to listen to a number of episodes and I finally am like, you know what? Maybe I've folded that last towel and I'm like, you know what? I am going to reach out to him this time, right? Exactly. This is the difference. The other question that I would have in your thoughts on this is the person that's thinking, there's too many. The podcast train has left the station and it's too late for me to do this. You're right. Don't do it. Leave all the <laughs> listeners from me and Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> this goes back to my idea of, I'm going to show you how ignorant I am. I don't know anything about building a Tim Ferriss-like rabid following Joe Rogan. There's nobody in the world that's going to listen to me for four hours. I mean, that's just the way it is. Your but wife? I, no, nobody. She doesn't listen to me at all. <laughs> <laughs> I just talk and it's like nothing's happening. But look, you're right. It is saturated. But when you use it the way that we do... All that matters is that person that you're talking to or the like Billy Waltney's example that I gave you. He doesn't go out and build a big audience for that. He's out there marketing his business. People come in, they're leads. They're not ready to buy yet. Disability insurance is a big buy. So when they hit his database, he's giving them episodes. So it's not like you're out there trying to get listeners for your podcast. The listeners are either the people you invite onto the show the people inside your database, the people close to you that are closest to doing business with you. And that's what makes a difference is how are you going to get an ROI where you're hoping to get a million fans listening to your show so that one of them buys your product? I'd rather have one person sitting next to me that wants to buy it right now. That's just my thoughts on it. So no, it's not too late if you are using it as a business strategy to keep the ball moving till you get the deal. Love your approaches. I knew I liked you. I mean, well, I liked you. Apparently, you invited me on your show, bro. Right. So that said, <laughs> how does somebody get a hold of you? If they're thinking of this right now and want to take it to the next level, what's the best way to get in touch with you? So there's a couple different ways. One of the ways that we give experts a sample of our service is to invite them on resultsleader.fm, which is where you and I met. And so if you go to resultsleader.fm, you can listen to episodes or apply to be on the show. So that's one way to learn about our company and what our company does and who we've helped and case studies and services, thepodcastfactory.com is where you would find that, thepodcastfactory.com. But I think the best place since you're a podcast listener, really, 
resultsleader.fm. Listen to my interview with Patrick. I call him the 100K kid. <laughs> Landing his first 100K deal and not knowing what to do. I'm like, man, what a problem to have. <laughs> I was scared. I bet. That would have crushed me if that happened to me. I would have just hid under a rock. <laughs> they call that imposter syndrome. Yes, sir. Listen, this has been great, Jonathan. I really appreciate your time and the ability for us to connect like this again. I really, it feels like we've known each other for a lot longer than a few months. So thank you so much. I'm going to give it a name. Podcasts give you speed influence. That time you spend together, speed influence so that you feel like you've known each other longer. Bro, it's been a pleasure. I'm so glad that we got to talk and thank you for your generosity. And thank you for letting me talk about podcasts. I don't feel like I get to talk about it enough. Yeah, thanks. Well, there you go. Enjoy. Peace. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to my podcast. If you found the guests and topics on my show and my perspectives on the show to be valuable to your own personal growth or to the growth of your team, I would love the opportunity to have a discussion with you on how the models, the approaches, and the book that I've published, The Leadership Bridge, How to Engage Your Employees and Drive Organizational Excellence, can help you and your organization as well. If you're interested, you can reach out to me at Patrick at emeryleadershipgroup.com and that's E-M-E-R-Y leadershipgroup.com. And let's explore how my unique models and approaches can help you and your team or your organization to rise above your best. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of the Learning from Leaders podcast. If you've enjoyed the show, please feel free to rate, review, and subscribe on your preferred podcast listening platform. We really appreciate that effort. Until next time, keep rising above your best as a leader.